Okay, let's take a look at the, the muscles of the back. Again, we have the superficial musculature on the right-hand side of the torso and deeper musculature over on the left-hand side. The first big giant muscle we see, the superficial muscle of the upper back, is going to originate from, from the skull. It's going to originate from the, the occipital bone all the way down the cervical and the majority of the thoracic spine. And then it's going to work its way over to insert into the clavicle and into the scapula. And that big giant muscle is referred to as the trapezius. So the left one's not there, but if it was, you get the kind of impression that this whole thing is kind of trapezoid in shape. So the trapezius has a bunch of, of actions, depends on which belly of it we contract. So if we contract the bottom portion of the trapezius, it's going to depress the shoulders and pull them down. If I contract the upper part of the trapezius, it's going to elevate the shoulder. That's something you would see perhaps if you were doing a shrug, shoulder shrug in a gym. If I kept the majority of my trapezius stable and I put the, the pull into the back of the head, it's going to allow for extension of the neck. Now when I take the trapezius and pull the trapezius off, there is a deep muscle that runs in a similar direction. The early anatomists thought this wrapped around the neck like a bandage, and so they named it the splenius because splenius refers to bandage in that language. And this particular splenius muscle attaches into the skull back in the occipital bone and part of the temporal, so we call it the splenius capitis. So if you'll notice, if my trapezius were to be there, my fibers would be oriented in this direction. When I take the trapezius off, underneath there is where I find the splenius capitis, and the fibers run in a perpendicular direction to where the trapezius would be. While I'm over here taking a peek at the left shoulder, I can find the medial border, or we call the vertebral border of the scapula. I find my spine of the scapula, and then a review from upper extremity that we have on another video is up in the supraspinous fossa, we had the supraspinatus muscle. Deep, or I'm sorry, not deep, but inferior to the spine of the scapula, we've got the infraspinatus muscle. And then if you recall, we have the teres muscles. The teres minor is the smaller one that sits a little bit more superior, and that's part of the rotator cuff along with the supra and infraspinatus. And then we got the long head of the tricep that comes in here and splits the two teres muscles. And this big one, if you grab the bottom of someone's armpit, that would be the teres major. The teres major is not part of the rotator cuff. So those we looked at before. Now we'll go more medial to the spine. I find two muscles that run from the spine. This is a cervical and, and thoracic spine, and they run from the spine over to insert into the scapula. Just keeping that same theme of majors and minors, the major lies on the bottom and is bigger. The minor lies on top and is more thin. These are your rhomboids. When the rhomboid major and rhomboid minor contract, it's going to move the scapula towards the midline, and we refer, to, we, we refer to that as retraction of the scapula. Again, the arm's kind of abducted here, so it's a little bit hinky to see, but right up here at the top is the superior border of the scapula. And then I find a muscle that attaches to that superior angle. So I have this muscle coming from the transverses of the upper four cervicals to come down and insert into the superior angle of the scapula. And then as this muscle shortens, notice the orientation of the fibers. When this muscle shortens, it's going to take the scapula and elevate it or lift it. And that's what we call it, the levator scapula. When we get away from the rhomboids and we get away from the trap and work our way down more inferior work, we have this giant, broad muscle of the back. It's a big bilateral muscle. The left-hand side, it's cut away. This muscle, if you notice, is coming off the ilium and coming off the sacrum, lumbar, and thoracic spine, and it's wrapping around ultimately to insert into the humerus. This big giant muscle is referred to as the latissimus dorsi, or in a gym situation, you would hear it referred to as the lats. Because it wraps around the front of the humerus, when it contracts, it does a bunch of things. It causes the arm to go into extension. It causes internal rotation of the humerus, and it also causes adduction because it brings the arm in towards the torso. If you do all three of those moves at the same time, internal rotation, adduction, and extension, you get a swimming motion. So we often refer to that muscle as the swimmer's muscle. Okay. The last muscle that we really have to take a look at here is the deepest of the muscles we could, that I can show you. And collectively, it's a group. And the group is referred to as the erector spinae. 
or sometimes you'll see it called the sacrospinalis because it does run all the way from the sacrum all the way up to the back of the occipital bone, but it, it runs in three individual muscle patterns and we can't really see them well on this model because they're obscured by so many of the more superficial muscles. But the most lateral of the muscles are referred to as iliocostalis. Then we come in medially, and we have longissimus, and then we come all the way in by the spinuses, and we have the spinalis. And then these break off into groups, and we don't have to worry about that for our purposes. But you'll see things like the iliocostalis lumborum, which would be deep and we can't see and then the iliocostalis thoracis, and then the iliocostalis cervicis. So we've got different names, but we don't have to worry about what those are. On our practicals, I'll just ask you for this group of muscles, and you'll tell me that group is the erector spinae, and then I might ask you which muscles per participate or belong to that group, and then you could give me one or more of those names. The muscle that's kind of here superficial to it isn't one that we have to worry about for our practical. It's called the, the serratus posterior inferior, and just I wanted to let you know it was there so you didn't worry about studying it when you were looking at our models. So here, name the group of muscles, erector spinae, and tell me a name of a muscle or two that's in that group, and that'll be good enough for us.